grab a copy of your favorite fan magazine, because we're about to journey through the time game. that I love Doctor Who stuff. I like to collect Doctor Who stuff. I always have. It, it's been a hobby of mine since I was like 10. It, it was like a treasure back then because it was so hard to come by. I love nonfiction. I like the novels. The audios are phenomenal. I've even kept my old VHS copies. <laughs> and of course the comics are incredible. But the one thing that's always intrigued me is Doctor Who Magazine. Doctor Who Magazine has made a name for itself for being the longest running science fiction publication around. From the very beginning, it's filled its pages with interviews with actors and musicians and producers and comic strips, news and information on new stories that are coming out, new videos that are being released, new DVDs, new products, new everything. This is the source of Doctor Who information. Even in today's fast-paced culture with the internet, Doctor Who magazine is still where many people get their information. If it's not the breaking news, it's still the interviews and the information about the, this is where news about the show's release. This is where new designs are, are told. These are where episode titles are released. They have the scoop. Recently, Panini, the producers of Doctor Who magazine, announced that they were going to make a new magazine that was geared to an American audience. I was pretty excited about this. I love it when a magazine is produced for me. It, it's really nice. Uh, Doctor Who is a very British property. It is British. Usually we wait, and Americans always get their products uh, later, and that's just the way it is, and I'm alright with that. But when I heard there was going to be an American magazine, I was pretty excited. I was finally going to get my chance of getting something made for me. Not something that might you might consider secondhand. Hmm. When they announced it, they told us the price was going to be about three dollars cheaper than Doctor Who magazine. Okay, so that's one good thing going for it. So about a week ago, I got a copy of the first issue of this new magazine, Doctor Who Insider. Uh, first off, it, it's very reminiscent of uh, other uh, science fiction magazines. It reminds me of uh, Star Wars Insider. Just in title, it reminds me of that. So uh, if you look at the cover. It's really nice and shiny, but right off, it puts me in mind of something uh, much more akin to Doctor Who Adventures, which is a British publication geared to a younger audience. Um, got Matt Smith right on the cover, uh, back in action, which makes me believe that they're going to talk about the new season, uh, season six, which is coming up. Flipping it around to the back cover, you see a full page ad for Who North America. Now, I love Who North America. This is where I get most of my Doctor Who products from, uh, and it's a great ad, so check those guys out. My fear when going into this magazine that was that it was going to have to do mainly with the new series, uh, but on a quick glance, I see that there are actually a lot of references to both the new Big Finish products coming out, uh, as well as classic stories. Uh, there's a feature right here on uh, the Pyramids of Mars, which is actually one of my favorite stories. So it, it does focus, it does have a, an interest in classic Who as well, which is nice to see. And it does talk about the Big Finish audios, so it's not stuck just on the new series, so that was a plus for me. Also, they spend a large portion of this magazine talking about products that are coming out. Uh, DVDs, uh, they, have an, uh, they have an article on Kenda and Snake Dance, which are new releases coming out. Uh, they talk about new audios coming out, new books on tape, new books that are coming out. And then they compare some of those books to other stories, which is a nice little feature. Uh, also, they talk about new products, new, uh, new action figures that are coming out, action figure sets, uh, new clothing, new shirts that are coming out. So they spend a lot of time on that, which is something that Doctor Who magazine also does, reviews. Now, something that I really like about this magazine is there's a whole section on basically being a fan. There's a section on uh, pictures uh, with other with uh, stars from conventions and things like that, which I really like. Uh, that was something a little different that, that really puts that fan touch on it. And also uh, creations that fan make, costumes, uh, etc. Uh, Tardises that people have made. And they have a call, call for entries, pretty much, for send us pictures of your 
a creation, and you can actually win a prize by sending something in, sending a high-quality picture in. So that's nice. Now, where this magazine falls down for me is when you compare it to Doctor Who magazine, and maybe that's unfair, but I had to do it. I noticed what I really liked about Doctor Who magazine, and I missed from this, and that's the comic strip. I sometimes do just pass over the comic strip in Doctor Who magazine, but when it wasn't there, I missed that. Now, when you compare these two magazines, you see the prints in both of them are much, much different. The print in the uh, Doctor Who Insider is much larger than the print in Doctor Who magazine. Now, that's not a big deal, but one of their things was that it was $3 cheaper than Doctor Who magazine. It was $3 cheaper, but you're getting much less information for that $3. I think it's worth the extra $3 to go with Doctor Who magazine in terms of what you're getting. Another thing about Doctor Who Insider that I noticed is that it felt much more like a piece of propaganda and advertising material than Doctor Who magazine does. It seemed like every other word was reminding you that Doctor Who was going to be on BBC America and to tune in and ch catch it on BBC America. See Matt Smith on BBC America. You can see that on BBC America. Doctor Who magazine has never seemed like propaganda to me. It seemed like a product that I was getting to entertain myself with. Now, like I said, it may not be fair to compare Doctor Who magazine and Doctor Who Insider. They're geared towards different audiences, but that's my fear. Doctor Who Insider is still created by a British team, and my fear is that they believe that is the kind of audience that Americans are. That they need to be talked down to, and they need the bigger print, and they need a much more sparse magazine. Now, The Real Reasons Marketing, these are very much for two different audiences. Doctor Who Magazine still does sell in the U.S., and they don't want to lose that audience. This is an additional uh, magazine for the U.S. audience. So I, I can see where they're going with it. All the criticisms I've made aside, I, keep in mind that this is the first issue of Doctor Who Insider, and I am sure that it's going to grow and change and evolve into a, a much more uh, meaty product. Go to the bookstore, pick it up, and support these products that are made for the American audience, because if you support it, they will make more. So that's my thoughts on Doctor Who Insiders. But I want to know what you guys think. What do you think? Let us know. Maybe I'm way off. Maybe Doctor Who Insider is the perfect magazine for an American audience. Let me know that. Leave it down in the comments and tell us what you think about Doctor Who Insider. And Doctor Who Magazine, for that matter. What do you think of Doctor Who Magazine? How is Doctor Who Magazine relevant to an American audience? And as always, please subscribe. And if you like this video, like it. As always, we hope you enjoyed this journey through the time gate.